but obviously I wanted to play. Um, I'd had a good season for Oldham, scored goals, and you know I wanted to continue that. And, and you know I didn't fancy being a sub and, and out the side. So, and it was between Blackburn and um, Barnsley. Both came in for us on loan. Um, but obviously I came down and I met Mel Machen and um, you know the rest is history obviously but uh, you know initially signed on loan. How did you feel about making your move to Barnsley then? Uh, I, I was looking forward to it, I mean at that time they were struggling, I think they were bang at the bottom of the league, they'd only got two points or something like that, it were, you know, they were really in a bad way. Um, but I got sold this, this future plan that they got that with, with Mel Machen, I mean it, obviously it didn't happen for Mel. Um, but. You know, the club obviously had ambition and, and the big thing for me more than anything was that I was going to play, you know, and I was going to play and, and I was going to be a big part of what was going to happen going forward. Did Mel Machen's resignation uh, in 1993 come as a surprise? Um, not really because obviously um, we, we weren't really going anywhere as a club and um, we did fight off relegation that season because we were struggling initially when I came in on loan and, um, but we had some good players that I thought maybe been wasted a little bit, we could have got more out of them and um, I think to be honest, I think perhaps Mel realised his time had come to an end as well. Um, so from the club's point of view, it was probably the right thing to happen. Uh, Viv Anderson took over with Danny Wilson as his assistant. What's your memories playing for Viv Anderson? For Viv, um, that he didn't want to give up playing. He initially came as a player, player manager um, with Danny. He actually played some games for Barnes and, you know, and played really well. Nick to goal or two as well, and um, but obviously then you, you know you got the advent of, of Danny getting the job. Danny's a fantastic manager, but the the, the biggest thing for me, um, what, where Danny made the difference was actually on the pitch initially because he was such a strong character and su such a strong leader that um, we played this this brand of passing football that um, he gave us all confidence and belief in, and he actually I actually played in midfield with him initially when we started it going and. Um, and he, and he was a really strong character because initially at first it, it didn't go that well. You know, I think we, we were a little bit hit and miss and there were times when even when he, he had his name read out, he, got, he were booed and things like that. And, but he was just so strong, you know, and, and had such a big heart. And, but he knew what he wanted and he knew how he wanted his team to play. Um, and, and I think them initial games when he, when he was player manager was, was really important to what happened after because basically had his ideas on the pitch. How did it make you feel when you were med captain then at Barnsley FC? Oh yeah, a, a really proud moment, you know, I mean for me, um, you know, this is the best time I ever had as a player, well probably ever in my career, um, you know, um, eight, nearly eight years at this football club and um, saw it when it weren't so good at the beginning, you know, obviously when, when Mel, Mel Merchant was there and, and he left and, and saw the transition under, you know, Viv and then Danny. Um, and all these young players come through as well, you know, that often gets missed. You know, people like Chris Morgan and, and Andy Little, Nicky Eden, you know, we had a good blend of youth and experience and, you know, I witnessed all that as a player, so to be actually made captain and be able to lead the side out was, you know, a fantastic feeling. All right, Neil, talk about the promotion season. At what point of the season did you think we could get promoted? Well, you probably aren't going to believe this, but we played West Brom away, first away game at season, and we beat them, I think, with 3-1. I'm not sure now it's score. 2-1. Two, two, one. Two, but um, I just knew after that game, because they were one of the fancy sides in the division, and everybody were tipping them to go up, and um, we just took them apart on that day. It was a really red-hot day, but some of the football that we played, I mean, it was only two, it could have been, it could have been six, it could have been anything. Um, and I just had a feeling that day, you know, obviously I played for a side that got promoted in Oldham, um, you know, that also played good football and I also had, you got that feeling about them and it was just, you don't know, you just, you just knew, you just knew the players that we got, we've got some experienced players, you know, right in the height of the careers, um, good ages, we've got these young players coming through and I, and I just had this sense then and um, I think if I'm right, we went on. I think we were unbeaten for about seven, five, five, five or six games. Yeah, it, you know, it was an unbelievable start, and it got us that far in front. You know, it let us relax into, into it was football really. How did the team feel before the Bradford game? 
I don't know because it's funny because all that season we got ourselves that far in front as, as we go, I'm saying that far in front. We had a great start and you know we had a real good feel to us and nobody really expected us to get promoted. They thought we might be around about it but nobody, so we were coming from a good place, there was no pressure on us really. Um, but that was probably the first time when there was a bit of pressure on us, you know, because obviously Bradford had come, they needed the points, they were struggling, you know, they needed the points to stay up and it became a, a massive game for both clubs and, um, you know, they, they had a lot of chances in that game, <laughs> Bradford, you know, I know we, we awesome. scored pretty early through through Wilco, Paul Wilkinson and, um, but after that there was there was nothing in the game and it, it wasn't until Clint, you know, clinched it with that winner that you know, you could really relax, you know, and I just remember all these smiley faces with about 10 minutes to go and, was, you know, we knew we, were going to, we knew we were going up. It was just like a real will to win, you know what I mean, and a real will to do well for your teammates because, you know, with, with some great players, you know, I, I really believe that with, with some fantastic players at the club. Um, and you, you, you just, you just wanted to get promoted because you just wanted to see them in, in the top flight and see how, you know, how they could cope with it. And, um, so not, not really, you, you, you just had this real togetherness, I think that was the, the thing that came across. What yeah. was the atmosphere like on the pitch? Oh, it was, well it was, it was a bit taut, you know, and, and obviously the supporters were getting behind us, and, um, but you could sense their apprehension a little bit as well when it was only 1-0 and, you know, and I think they flashed one wide of the post and somebody yeah. missed a sitter for them and then I think they hit the post, didn't they? Yeah, I've got Yeah, I mean, you know, and the, and the support, you could tell, you know, you could feel it with the supporters, but to be fair, they stuck with us because obviously, you know, the, the rewards at the end of it were going to be great. How would you describe your relationship with Barnsley fans? Oh, like, I'm like one of them, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, he enjoyed it that much and I, I was fortunate enough to play it and, and enjoy it with them and, yeah. you know, with some good times and um, it's just such a well-run club and well-supported, yeah. you know, fan base is fantastic to be fair, you know, they've seen quite a bit of success of recent times, I mean, they're having it again now under Paul Eckingbottom, I mean, yeah. he's done a fantastic job and, you know, it's so good to see because, like you say, you know, I just associate this club with, with success and, en yeah. and enjoyment from my time here. And it's just good that the supporters can, you know, see what Paul's doing now. And they, you know, they're believing in what he's doing, which is great. Yeah. yeah. How did it feel to be the only captain to take us to the Premier League? Oh yeah, I mean that's that's a, a massive honour because. You know, listen, this club's had some great players, um, you know, Ronnie Glavin we mentioned earlier, what a fantastic player, and Mick McCarthy, people like that as, as a captain, and, um, you know, I, I don't, I know people see me with them, but I, I, I don't see myself as as good as them, you know, they, these are great players, um, so, um, you know, just a fantastic honour, really. What was it like to score the first ever goal for Barnsley in the Premiership against West Ham? Uh, whew, yeah, a relief. Massive relief because it's like anything else. It's the excitement of it, and then when it actually comes to it, it's you know, are we going to be good enough? And you know, everybody's thinking, you know, is it going to work for us? Or and it was just like a release of pressure, the fact that you know we got us noses in front. And it, I can remember, I can. It's funny because I, I look now, I see that stand now, and you know, I can still see it full of red and white, and it just all go up, you know, when it when the ball hit the back of the net, and. Um, you know, just a great, great feeling, but um, it just felt like we'd arrived, you know, and that we could, basically. And then three days later, he scored the only goal at win at Crystal Palace, yeah. uh, in a first victory. How did that feel yeah. for yourself and, and the lads? Well, it, it was good. It was well, it was, it was great because it, it, it was a, you know, it was a fair way out. It was a, it was a decent strike, but um, <laughs> well, at that time, I think we were, we were sort of hanging on a bit and. If I remember rightly, Little Shez was saying, like, like, knock it in the corner. He says, <laughs> says, relieve a bit of pressure, sort of turn him around, knock it in the corner, we'll pen him in. And it opened up. I mean, I think the, when the ball came to me, I think Shez clattered into somebody and it was a foul. How it, it went right through somebody, anyhow. But I remember him sh shouting on, like, you know, get it in the corner and we'll, we'll pen him in. So I just kept carrying it and I thought, right, I'll just hit it. And he hit it and then, yeah, next thing I knew everything, you know, it was all bedlam again. What are your memories of that season uh, of the FA Cup run that we had? 
Yeah, well, well that was really important to be honest because what it did was it gave us the belief in, in, you know, in the league because we were beating all Premier League clubs. We, we beat some really good clubs. I mean, we, when we got right through to the quarter-final, when we got beat by Newcastle. Um, so we, we did brilliant, and, but it did help the league form. You know, it, it, it helped us through the season. And going on to this one now, what are your memories of the Liverpool game at Toko when Gary Willard dismissed Barnard, Morgan and Sheridan? It was a farce, wasn't it? It was a farce, but um, it was, well, it was, but it was a shame because we'd played so well. I mean, we were beating them with, we were beating them with 11, then we were beating them with 10, you know, and then we got level with 9 and it was like, well, they keep sending them off, we're still in it. I mean, the biggest thing was the, the, the 4,500 people that waited for him after on the main road at the top. <laughs> Because I remember coming out of the stand, I thought, well, what's happening here? I thought well, there must be a season ticket offer on or something. But uh, no, it was, obviously they were waiting for him and uh, they weren't happy with him, I put it that way. What are your memories in the dressing room uh, following the relegation at Leicester? Um, yeah, just tough, tough to take. Um, you know, you, you, you just knew that it was going to be a tough game because obviously Leicester as a way is always a tough game. Um, it wasn't a great game of football and if I remember rightly the goal was a, a bit of a scruffy goal that they got um, and it was just it, it just as you know a bit a bit deflated because we sort of scrapped and scrapped and got ourselves into a good position um, I felt that we were really unlucky I know the season after you know I played for Bradford in the Premier League and we stayed up with less points than Barnsley went down with so we were unlucky um, but we played some good stuff and to be honest with you during that season we, we probably we probably try to out, out football some really good football sides and we did a lot of the times so you know although we're disappointed I just think the whole experience were you know were, were definitely worth having. And how did you transfer to Charlton Athletic come um, Well what it was, um, obviously I was coming to the end of my contract um, had a year left and um, you know the we got promoted, I'd done well, um, I think I finished with 15 goals that season which was like the, the highest of any midfield player in the Premier League. Um, you know, I, I thought it was only right that I were brought in line with you know, the, the players that sort of came in and I knew that were on more money than me I, you know, and I'd earned that right. Um, and obviously, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the, 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 the club didn't see it that way. So. It's, it's like anything else, your family's got to come first. Um, I was absolutely gutted, if I'm honest, because you know, it's, um, you know, it's when you're there seven years, eight years nearly, and, and you've gone through what you've gone through with them. And I could see that if we could have kept that group of players together, we, we would have definitely come straight back up because we were miles better than the championship. Um, but um, obviously, this is, these things happen in football and you, you've got to make, the, make these decisions. What's your greatest memory um, from playing for Barnsley FC? Greatest memory? Um, yeah, probably probably that goal, that first goal in, in you know in, in the Premier League because um, it for me it was my, my first game in the Premier League. Um, I know it, obviously it was the club's first game, the supporters, it was everything. Um, and you, you just you, you do you, you're going into the unknown because you just don't know, and it's a different standard of football. Um, you know, to, to just get that relief of getting his noses in front and and everybody enjoying the you know the moment, um, you know, was a was a really good experience. You scored some screamers in your time for Barnsley. Which would you say what your your favourite? Um, yeah, P probably the one at Newcastle. I scored one at Newcastle in the, the League Cup, and I hit it with my left foot. It's, uh, it was one of them where we, again we, I think we were under the cosh a little bit and we'd sort of broke. Um, and if I remember rightly, I think it was either Gary Fleming or Charlie Bishop that rolled it square and then they opened up on my left foot. And he had a go goalkeeper called Pavel Cernicek and he, were, he weren't bad. <laughs> and he was just slightly off his line and I thought, I'm going to chip him as it came out of my left foot. And I thought, no, nah, I'll just smash it. And I just smashed it and it, one of them, it just curled away. And it just curled away and it went right in the postage stamp, right in the top corner. <laughs> and it was like unbelievable. I thought, oh man. Unbelievable. And I could see them all go up in bottom <laughs> top corner, all Barnsley fans, well, because they put them all in this, this corner at ground at Newcastle. And uh, so probably that one, yeah. Who would you say what greatest player you played with at Barnsley? Played with? Um, 
Well, that's a tough one because I, I play with some really good players, you know, and it, it might seem easy to say now, you know, we're doing this, but I genuinely, you know, I, I believe that. And probably the ones that I'm going to say might be the ones that are surprising because you, you could throw in Paul Wilkinson, John Hendry, who were fantastic as a pair. That were a master stroke by Danny getting them in. Um, and, you know, the other good players, Neil Thompson were a great player from fullback, Darren Bernard. Um, but the two for me that, that, that sort of really epitomised what we were about is that, and one of them didn't actually play in the Premier League, and I think it would have been better if, if we'd have had him, is Steve Davis. He, I thought he was a really top class centre half, good footballer, scored a goal from centre half. And the other one was my little mate, Darren Shuddedon. I thought he was a great little player. Um, and a better player than, you know, he got credit and, um, you know, got great vision, great awareness. Um, he got this ability to dictate a game. I mean, you, to look at him, he was what, five foot three, five foot four, but he was like this pocket rocket that got about the pitch and, you know, and he was great to play with because, you know, without players like that to play with, you don't get the freedom to get forward, to get your goals and, you know, so you rely on your mates and, um, you know, for me, they were great players. Do you think football's changed in your lifetime? Oh yeah, massively. I mean, there's a lot of things that change for the better. Um, some that don't, um, but I, I think, you know, technology's better now, we, we know more. Um, I think sides are more organised. Um, I think players are fitter, they know more about their health and well-being and, and how to look after themselves. Um, so I think, yeah, I think things do get better, that, you know, but I, there is some things, I'm quite a traditionalist, you know, and there's some things that I think need to be left alone. It's a great game and it captures everybody's imagination and, you know, it, it I mean, we proved that, it, it, you know, it captured the town's imagination, you know, when we got promoted. So, um, I, I just think it's a great game of football and it's there for everybody.